Qualitative Research Methods Underlying principles of naturalistic work, the values and contexts inherent in every human activity are positive as necessary to any analysis. The flexibility and sensitivity of the human activity are critical to understanding this complexity, but rigorous efforts are required to make effective use of those qualities. Naturalism as a research paradigm. When defined as a research paradigm, rather as holistic, based in the perceptions of individuals and communities and continually changing. Theory formation requires an organic, conscious process designed to understand phenomena rather than to test hypotheses. The research goal centers on understanding, discovering, and explaining rather than on predicting or testing. Naturalism in LIS Research The professional schools of social work and information studies have always lodged behind the academic disciplines in accepting new theoretical and methodological trends because of their marginal position. People in these fields tend to be conservative, the imitators rather than the innovators. Role of Mixed Multi-Method Research First, determine and adhere to the theoretical impetus underpinning the project. Work to account for the impact of the method that is brought into the primary methodological trust. Drive the design decisions from the assumptions of the base method. Employ only the essential data sets. Ethical concerns, participant confidentiality rather than participant's anonymity generally dominates in qualitative research. The face-to-face -face involvement of interviews, general observation, focus groups, and participant's observation preclude any pretense of participant anonymity. Even written documents such as questionnaires and journals can contain such revealing information that identification of some participants is relatively easy. Data gathering techniques. The act of gathering data for a qualitative study is an evolving process rooted in ongoing analysis. It involves more than obtaining discrete units of information. Simply holding a present number of interviews, for example, does not constitute meaningful data gathering. Instead, the researcher engages in reactive cyclical movement between data gathering and data analysis. Initial interviews might well, for example, spark a tentative point of analysis that would then be feedback into the interview protocol. Sampling. The standard of saturation will not, however, answer all questions regarding sample size. A second gay factor must be involved namely a nature of research questions being asked. Consider again the question of library anxiety among doctoral history students. A phenomenological study might seek to understand the nature of the anxiety as felt by those students. In that case, the researcher needs only a small sample, 5 to 8, but each person must be studied in great depth. An ethnographic study might seek to describe the in-library behavior of those students. The researcher would, therefore, need a larger sample of the student population, 15 to 20 plus some data from those who interact with the students, such as reference librarians and circulation staff. A grounded theory study might seek to describe the social and psychological processes that those with library anxiety 
go through in their use of the library. The researcher would again need a larger sample, 15 to 20, although it would be consist only of the students themselves. The most common sampling techniques in qualitative studies follow the thread of purpose rather than the probabilistic sample of a positive approach. The naturalist approach starts with a purpose for working with one type of participant rather than with another. In LIS research, the following methods may be most useful. Maximum variety sampling. This method seeks a heterogeneous a sample as possible and useful when seeking to under identify patterns and commonalities that exist across otherwise divergent individuals. This is analogous to the classic experimental sampling technique known as stratified random sampling in that population variables are identified as much as possible in advance so that a delivery Beyond effort can be made to maximize heteronegativity. Extreme case sampling. This method selects participants who appear to exemplify characteristic of interest in order to clarify the critical issues in an area. For example, those who experience severe cases of library anxiety might be interviewed and observed to help identify key factors in that issue. Intensity sampling. This technique identifies participants who have a great deal of experience rather than an extreme experience with a phenomenon. For example, in a study of reference librarians use of tagging websites for research purposes, those who have used this technique for a substantial period would be selected over novices when taking an intensity sample. Snowball sampling. This method identifies participants who are linked through shared experiences, perspectives, or other factors. Participants point the researcher towards other individuals in the same population. People who use library computer labs to play forbidden group based computer games might be identified through snowball sampling. Observation, a potentially effective means of deepening the field's understanding of human behavior. Observation requires careful efforts to prepare, gather data, respect participants, and analyze data. Researchers are expected to use the extant research literature as one means of providing background, insight, and question. Gain access to a community with integrity. Choose the sample which most effectively addressed the research questions. Deliberately identify and follow a chosen researcher role. Document data collection with care, detail, and reflection. Truthfully meet all ethical obligations, particularly those which are unexpected. Leave the failed ethnically. Analyze the resulting data accurately, honestly, and fully. The setting and purpose determine the observation structure and format. Anything from stationing a video camera in front of the reference desk to blending in as a parent at a storytelling session could constitute observation. In every case, the ethical concerns mentioned earlier must be careful addressed. For much LIS research, the setting varies along the following four continua. Number of participants setting can be crowded as in a busy branch library or sparsely populated as in a quiet map library. Public versus private. Sitting can be as public as a reference desk on a private as a professor's office. Size of the observable actions. Sitting can be limited to small actions such as keyboard motions or they can Focus on large actions such as routes taken through the library building. Staff or public setting can involve library staff, public, or some combination thereof. 
Interviews. The structure interview is the mode of choice when the interviewer knows what he or she does not know and can therefore frame appropriate questions to find it out, while the unstructured interview is the mode of choice when the interviewer does not know what he or she doesn't know and must therefore rely on the respondent to tell him or her. A set of four questioning techniques threatens the def the resultant data, comparison questions for or similar risks while contrast questions focus on differences. Of course, narrative focus on stories, anecdotes, the flow of an overall experiences, interviewing techniques encourage human centered service and resource design in LAS by focusing on client perf perfect type of information work. Probe questions explore the unknown background of a statement while clar clarifying questions elucidate details or factors of a statement in order to further explicate it. Probe questions that follow the main questions could of the following types. Continuation. Follow up on the same participants to elicit more details. Complete a train of truth that was interrupted. Complete a description they are appended in that they might lead to new topics. Elaboration. Solicit further analysis or explanation of a specific point. They are found in a only add to an area without leading to new topics. Clarification used to clear up the interviewer's own understanding of the participants' comments. They might involve language, culture, or simply clarification. Steering probes. These are designed to move the interview back into the areas of interest or away from areas that are being avoided. Sequence probes. These are designed to elicit explanation of how phenomena progress in a step-by-step -step or stage fashion. Evidence probes ask people to explain, explain the basis for their viewpoints, opinions, or beliefs. Slant probes seek to identify often indirectly the participants bias perfective world view or mental model of a phenomenon group or situation documents questionnaires diaries papers and more questionnaires vary by means of delivery in person telephone mail email ww and point of contact and format open-ended questions at t2 denial scales multiple choice questions ratings and rankings this is perhaps the most truly studied form of data gathering each means of delivery has its advantages and disadvantages an in-person questionnaire allows the researcher to clear up any of views misunderstandings on the spot but it is time consuming data analysis tools and methods two principles of qualitative data analysis recur in virtually all description of it first Analysis is an ongoing process that feed back into the research design right up to the last moment of data gathering. Second, whatever theory, model, or working hypothesis eventually develop must grow naturally from the data analysis rather than standing to the side as a priori statement that the data will affirm or refute. Discourse Analysis Presently, the majority of LIS qualitative work seeks to understand population within their information, interaction context. A key subset of this work employs discourse analysis working from a more sociological perspective. These scholars skew the constant comparison approach to content analysis in favor of a focus on knowledge formation which organize institutional practices and societal reality on a large scale content analysis basic one of the most commonly and used data analysis techniques of qualitative research content analysis uses 
uses a set of procedure to make valid inferences from text. These inferences are about the senders of the message, the message itself, and the audience of the message. Content analysis is based on the promise that the many words from interviews, observations, and documents can be reduced to or organized into categories in which words or word units, paragraphs, share the same central meaning or connotation. Content Analysis Terms before exploring the techniques of content analysis, it is necessary to review a few of basic terms relating directly to coding. A datum is a unit of information that is recorded in the durable medium distinguishable from other data, analyzable by explicit techniques, and relevant to a particular problem. These units may be any of the following physical pages, syntactical, word sentences, paragraph, referential objects, events, persons, acts, prepositional word which are required to conform to a certain structure and thematic require a deep understanding of the language. Categories organize each datum by grouping it in with other that share similar denotation or connotation. Themes then clustering categories that share some commonality such as reference to a single issue. Additional terminology is needed to the delineate among the various supporting documents that maximize coding, fidelity, accuracy, and consistency. What are people doing and or trying to do? What are the ways, means, strategies, and tactics they employ to do this? How do they frame, word, discuss, describe, and conceptualize both what they're doing and how they do it? What are their explicit and implicit assumptions about both goal and process? What did the researcher actually observe? And what do the failed notes add to an understanding of that observation? Why were their failed notes made and these particular items included? Coding data among the many advantages of coding are that it both follows upon the leads to generative questions, features the data, displacing the researcher from description, and forcing interpretation, and higher levels of move toward ultimate integration of the entire analysis and yields the desired conceptual density relationships among the codes and the development of each coding lies at the heart of the constant comparative method and that units of data are compared to each other in terms of their fit into the developing coding scheme. Coding techniques Only experience can translate the mechanism coding guidelines into efficient, effective methods, but several techniques facilitate that process. Initially, during open coding, the researcher should look for terms used by the participants using those terms as major coding terms. Once the categories are firmly in mind, the focus moves to understand each day's observation and interview. Moving from code to theory. The process of moving from coding to theory or pattern generations is ongoing, but when saturations has been reached, it is necessary to leave the field and begin the final analysis. After all, the data are finally coded. Analysis gradually reveals a framework of patterns and contrasts from which in some cases theory can be developed. Ensuring coding integrity. During coding, three techniques help ensure integrity of the work. First, accessibility reliability level must be established prior test coding and not regularly before final coding. Reproducibility enter coding reliability is a minimum standard. Double coding the same transcript is essential get code. Recode reliability rating is the minimal for good agreement. Developing grounded theory. 
approach while well, not only theoretical options stand out as central to the naturalistic paradigm because it develops models, hypotheses, and theory directly and primarily from the data without reference to pre-existing concepts or theories. Grounded theory work values the process of continuously developing, refining, and enhancing theory and recognition of contribution that other students, respective, and minds can make to the original effort. The explanation of these theories are grounded in the data, evidence, and examples of the data. Ensuring integrity is no more difficult for naturalistic work that it's for positive work, but again, the means differ failed studies can be models of rigor requiring the researcher to develop and apply systematic mechanism for documenting all aspects of the research process. For example, positivists use techniques such as random sampling to support generalizability, while naturalistic use techniques such as prolonged contact to support transferability. Additional techniques. In addition to standard techniques, Miles and Haberman listed 12 tactics for confirming meaning, avoiding bias, and assuring the quality of conclusion, namely, counting nothing pattern or them seeing plausibility, clustering, making metaphors, split variables, subsuming particular into the general factoring, nothing. Relations between variables, finding interventing variables, building a logical chain of evidence, and making conceptual or theoretical coherence. Presentation of Findings The material in Chapter 11 of this volume explains all the critical points regarding the presentation of general research findings. However, there are five points specific to a presentation of qualitative research findings that bear mention first in almost any forum it may be necessary to explain the concepts behind naturalistic methods more and more reviewers are familiar with the naturalistic paradigm these are still those who requires authors to provide a basic primer to readers summary as LIS scholars lead the information community development of information system and services for users they must maintain a solid grounding in the purpose behind their work, understanding what users encounter as they move through the complex, multidimensional, and dynamic experience of information interaction or provides that solid grounding. Qualitative research methods enrich and augment the toolbox of ILS research approaches. Applied research or human experiences centers on problems of such complexity that no single paradigmatic approach can suffice.